Okay, so continuing the theme from Tuesday on psoas and core, um, we're going to continue with core today. But as always for a um, hit class, we'll start with some fascia circles to warm up. So taking the weight into the right leg, just start circling through the left ankle, making those circles as big as you possibly can. And then take those the other way. And then moving those circles into the knees. As you guys know already, fascia circles is a great way of getting the entire body moving, ready for exercise. And then take those circles in the other direction. And then into the hip. And then take those circles in the other direction. Excellent stuff. Then we'll move to the other side, starting with the ankle again, really big circles into that ankle. And then taking that the other way. Then into the knee. And the other way. And then into the hip. And the other way. Excellent, and bring both feet down onto the mat. Nice big circle through both hips. Clicking and creaking this morning. And then take those circles in the other direction. And then bringing the hips to stillness, circle through the centre of the torso, really getting some movement in those ribs. And then the other way. And then a few circles through the shoulders, really squeezing those shoulders up to the ears and dragging them down the back. And then the other way, squeezing them behind you and rolling them forwards. And then circling through the wrists, Great big circles, getting into all of the edges of the range of motion of the wrist. And then taking that the other way. And then making a fist, doing circles, feeling how that changes the stretch in the forearms. And then take that the other direction. And then into the elbows. And the other way. And then really big circles through the shoulders, reaching up and reaching back, really using the muscles of the shoulders to do the circles rather than too much momentum. and then take that the other direction too, reaching back and bringing it forwards. And 
and then bring the arms down by your sides and take your left ear towards your left shoulder and just hang out there for a moment, really relaxing the right shoulder down. And then rolling the head around the front, bring the right ear towards the right shoulder, really relaxing the left shoulder down. And then just take a couple of rolls to each side, just releasing any tension in the back of the neck and the top of the shoulders. And then once you've done both sides equally, leave the chin in the centre of the chest, interlace the fingers and cut the back of the skull. Get your chin as close to your throat as you can and then press the head up into the hands and resist that movement with the hands. And then releasing that off, take the hands behind the back, really stretch the hands away from you, opening up the chest and take the chin to the ceiling, keeping the back of the neck long, feeling a stretch down the front of the throat. And then release that off and come to the tops of our mats. So the first hit round today is actually going to be a vinyasa to get us nice and warmed up. So <clears throat> the vinyasa goes, inhale up, exhale down, step or jump it back to plank, come down to chaturanga, into your up dog, into your down dog, jump it forwards and back up. Okay, so we'll go through those. We'll probably fit two in in each round and we'll match the breath with the movement as we go. So come to the tops of your mats to get ready. And let's go, inhale up, exhale down. Step or jump it back, down through Chaturanga, up dog, downward facing dog. Looking forward, step or hop it forwards, inhale up, inhale straight back down, jump it back, down, and then into up dog, down dog, and we're done, rest. Good stuff. Let some more air in. <laughs> Inhale up. Down we go. Jump it back. Chaturanga. Up dog. Down dog. Jump it forwards. Inhale up. Exhale down. Jump it back. Down we go. Inhale up dog. Exhale down dog. Jump it forwards. Inhale up and rest. Good. Get ready for the next round. Inhale up, exhale down. Jump it back. Down through Chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Jump it forwards. Inhale up, exhale down. Jump it back. Down through Chaturanga. Into up dog. Into down dog. Jump it forwards and rest. Three down, five to go. Let's go. Inhale up, exhale down, jump it back. Down through your chaturanga, into your upward dog, into your downward dog, jump it forwards. Inhale up, exhale down, jump it back. Knees, chest, chin, cobra is always an option if chaturanga is not for you. And rest, halfway. Next round, inhale up, exhale down, jump it back. Remember to keep the breath moving. And rest. Good. Three more. Grinding down through the feet, inhale up, exhale down, jump it back, chaturanga, up dog, down dog, 
Jump it forwards. Inhale up. Exhale down. Good. Keep it going. And rest. Good. Two more. So really think about pulling the core in and up as you're making these movements. Squeezing your thighs together. round. Again, aiming for two complete rounds. Get ready. Inhale up. Exhale down. Step or jump it back. Knee has chest chin cobra or chaturanga up dog. Down dog. Jump it forwards. Good stuff. Keep breathing. Pull those tongue muscles in. Finish off your round and you're done. Well done. Have a little drink of water if you need. Excellent stuff. Okay, if you have a block, a block would be helpful for the next round. If you don't have a block, you could use a stool or a chair, or depending on your flexibility, you could put your foot on uh, your hands on the floor. So <clears throat> use what works for you. So this round is based on warrior three. And as I said, continue to focus on core and hips like we did on Tuesday's class. So for this one, we're going to do four rounds with one leg, four rounds with the other leg, and we're going to do two different directions. So the um, first two rounds, you can either do it with a straight leg or a bent leg. We lift the leg out behind us in warrior three, we bring it round to the side. We lift it back, we bring it round to the side. So we keep that movement going. So really getting into the motion in the hips for two rounds. Then we go the other way. I'm just moving forward so I don't kick everything on my shelf behind me. So then we're taking it from warrior three, over to skiers lunge, back to warrior three, over to skiers lunge. So taking it back, dropping it down. Two on that side, then we switch to the other leg. If you want to up the ante at any point, you can do by instead of holding onto the block, hands at heart centre. You come down into your lunge, you step it back up. But in order to do that, you obviously need to make sure everything is pulling in to keep your balance. So you can use the block or you can have your heart, hands at heart centre, whichever suits you best. For the circles the other way, I would use the block so that you can focus on your hip mobility. So starting with whichever leg you fancy, we're going to do the circles first. So down onto the block, reach the leg behind you, circle it round to the side really getting into all of those outer hip muscles that we don't use as often as we should. So keep the breath moving throughout this. Try and keep the hips as level as you can. Just keep circling that leg around. Good, and rest. 20 more seconds and we'll switch to the other movement. Okay, let's go. Second round, circle it round. Take it back. Circle it round. Good. Excellent stuff. Keep moving. Keep circling that leg. Squeezing the inner thighs together throughout the whole movement. Oh, and rest. Okay, so now we're going into skiers lunge, the opposite side. Either using the plank or hands at heart centre, or maybe one of each. Let's go. So stretching the leg back taking it across to the other side, bending the standing leg. Inhaling it up, straighten the leg, exhale it down, bend the standing leg. Keep the lifted leg nice and engaged, so it's lighter to lift. Pull those tummy muscles in and relax, good. That's first, first one of those done. So, 
If you want to just do it with hands at heart centre, next round to that, otherwise stay on the block. So coming from warrior three, skiers lunge. Take it back up, squeeze everything in. Really controlled movements here. So our knee is staying stacked over our ankle, even though it's moving forwards and back. We're pulling our thigh muscles in, keeping the breath moving. Good, and relax. Okay, moving to the other side for the circles. <clears throat> so back onto using the block. Let's go, stretch that leg out behind you, circle it around to the side. Trying to keep the hips level, really squeezing the inner thighs towards one another, really using all of the muscles around the outside of the hip. Good. And rest, we're done already. One more that side, and we'll go to our skiers lunge on this side. Okay, so get ready, let's go. Stretching it back, circling it around. I find it easier to keep the foot flexed in these circles, but if you prefer a pointed toe, then obviously we'll work with what feels natural for you. Almost there. And rest. Okay, so going into our skiers lunge now. If you want to use the block, use the block. Let's go. Stretching the leg back, crossing it over into skiers lunge. Squeeze those inner thighs. Take it back, cross it over. Ooh. Keeping the breath moving, keep those tummy muscles pulling in. And keep squeezing those inner thighs towards one another. Good. Rest. If you fancy doing, having a go at doing that in warrior three, with the hands at chest. Last round. So take it back and then bring it over. Really pulling the tummy muscles in to keep your balance. Keep your eyes focused. Good. And rest. Have a little drink of water if you need to. <clears throat> we'll just stretch the legs out a little bit before our next hip round. So come down onto the mats. Bring the left foot forwards, right knee on the mat. Tuck the tailbone under and then just take the hips forward as far as is comfortable. Really feel the stretch on the front of the right thigh. If you want more of a stretch, you can always take your shoulders back. <laughs> Just have a couple of breaths there. And then taking the hips back, maybe wiggle that foot forward slightly, flex the toes up towards your nose. Keeping the hips above the back knee, really stretch the chest forward so the back is long. The longer your back, the bigger the stretch on the back of the front leg. Excellent, two more breaths here. Take your hands to the inside edge of the front foot and swing that foot back around. Take the hands left and swing the right foot forwards. Start by coming up onto your knee, tuck the tailbone under, and then take the hips forward. Feeling the stretch down the front of the left thigh this time. And then if you want more of a stretch, keep that tailbone tucked, take the shoulders back slightly. Excellent. Couple more breaths here. Then take the hips back, wiggle that front foot forward if you need to. Flex the foot, keeping the hips above the back knee. <clears throat> Stretch the chest forwards, really lengthening the back, and then take the chest lower towards the leg. Fabulous. 
Okay, move your hands out the way. Take the knees back because the next hip round is based on camel. Okay, so this one's going to be a try two minutes. So we're going to do 30 minutes of one exercise, 20, sorry, 30 seconds even, not 30 minutes, <laughs> 30 seconds, <laughs> 20 seconds, and then 10 seconds. So for our camels, we're going to start with swimming camels. So you can do this on your toes, where <clears throat> we swim round to one side, lift the hips up, we then swim around to the other side, lift the hips up. So swimming from one side to the other. It's easier to start on your toes because that brings your heel closer to you. But as you warm up, you might find it more comfortable to drop the toes um, and come down onto the knees. But really focus on pushing those hips forwards. The second 20 seconds is going to be hip lifts. So you can have your hands on your hips or your hands at your heart center. We sit back onto our heels, we come back up into camel. We sit back onto our heels, we come up into camel. The last 10 seconds is going to be a lift and lower. So hands at heart center or on your hips. We want to try and keep our body as straight as possible. Pull everything in and up. We lean it back as far as we can and then we bring it forwards to uh, neutral. We lean it back as far as we can and then we bring it forwards. So 30 seconds, swimming. Let's go. So 30 seconds, swim it round to one side, swim it around to the other side. Really opening up down the side body. Keeping the breath moving. Good. Keep going. Almost there. Okay, coming back to the center, hip lift. So sit it back, lift it up. Sit it back, lift it up. Good, keep moving. Taking those hips forwards and then lift and lower. Nice long body, take it back, lift it forwards. Take it back, lift it forwards. Good. Really lengthening down the front of the thighs. Then let's go back to our swimming camels. Really stretching out down the side body. Lifting those hips forwards. And keeping the breath moving. Nice noisy exhales. Moving as fast or as slow as suits your body. Good. Reaching those fingertips back. Really lengthening. And come back to the center for hip lifts. Lift it up, sit it back. Lift it up, sit it back. Squeeze everything in and up as you lift. Getting those hips forwards. Couple more of these. Good, then lifts and low, um, lean backs. So keeping the body nice and long, lean it back. Squeeze it forward, squeeze those inner thighs together. Squeeze the tummy muscles in. Good, and rest. Okay, coming back onto your mats, into a child's pose. Either wide knee or knees together. Stretching the hands forward, bringing the forehead to the mat. Keep the arms activated so the elbows are lifted. Stretch the fingers forward as you stretch your sit bones back towards your heels, lengthening the spine. Take three deep breaths there. Excellent. Okay, so the next round is based on side plank. So bringing, you can either do this on your elbow or you can do it on your hand, whichever suits you. And obviously there are varying degrees of side plank. So depending on how you're feeling today, you don't necessarily need to be in full side plank. With this one, we're going to do two different types of exercise. We're going to do hip lifts and then we're going to do crunches. So with your hip lifts, you can do them from your knees, literally lifting the hip up to the side, dropping them back down again. You can take it longer. So one 
the top leg long, the bottom knee on the floor, lifting the hip up and bringing it back down. Or you can do both legs out long, taking it down, lifting it up. So if you have your legs out long, it's easier to balance if your feet are staggered. But if you do want to do feet together, just make sure that the ankles are really flexed. Oh, she says. <laughs> so that it's a bit easier to maintain um, good form in your ankles. We don't want to um, overstretch any of our ankles. So two, two like that. Then we're doing two of crunches. So we're stretching out as long as we can, crunching elbow to knee. So I would suggest doing that with your knee down. Obviously, if your knee is here, right underneath your hip, makes it easier for balance. If it's further away, then it takes it more into the crunch. You can do that on your leg if you want to. Uh, I'm not gonna go that deep today. So, four on one side, four on the other side, two of hip lifts, two of crunches. So let's get ready. And let's go. So, I'm lifting my hip up, really stretching the hip up really getting into the side body, lifting those hips as high as you can. Hand can be on your hip or reaching up, whichever you prefer. Keep breathing, nice and easy exhales. Good, and rest. So we're going to do the same side for another 20 seconds, same exercise. Remember, you can do it on your hand or you can do it on your elbow, it's up to you. Let's go. Dipping the hip down, lifting it up. Really lifting up as high as you possibly can. We're halfway already, more than halfway. Keep moving, squeeze it up. Good, and rest. Okay, same side, moving to crunches this time. Either knee down, or you can have your knee out long, it's up to you. Let's go. Exhaling on the crunch. Really squeezing that elbow to that knee, but then stretching out as much as you can in between. Making those movements as big as possible. Good, and the rest. Okay, one more this side, and then we'll switch to the other side. Okay, let's go. Good. Almost there. And rest. Switching it around to the other side for our hip lifts. And let's go. Lifting it up, taking it down. Keeping the body sideways really squeezing the inner thighs together as well as using all of the core muscles. Everything that's attached from your ribs all the way around the core, front, back and sides, down to your inner thighs and rest. Good, one more of those and then we'll move to our crunches. Let's go. Squeezing everything in and up. Good. And rest. Okay, so two rounds of crunches. Knee can be down or up. Stretching it out, crunching it in. Really think about pulling all of those core muscles in on the crunch. Good, almost there, keep moving. And rest, excellent stuff. Last round. Let's go. Good. Breathing 
and rest. Excellent stuff. Okay, we're going to jump straight into the last round. So you can do this with or without the block. The block just makes it a little bit stronger. So the basic movement on this one is on our backs. Our legs are in a um, shins parallel with the ceiling. <clears throat> From here, we pull the tummy muscles in, so we're really trying to press the lower back into the mat. We take one toe down, keeping the leg in the same shape, put it back up. We take the other leg down, put it back up. So we do one leg, then the other leg. We want this to be quite slow movement. If you're doing it with the block, you pop the block underneath the back of the pelvis so that the lower back is really supported. Really pull the tummy muscles in, take one toe down, bring it back up, and take the other toe down, bring it back up. We're going to do four of those, then we're going to move to crisscross legs. So we take the legs out to the side, we cross them over, we take them out to the sides, we cross them over. With this one, today we're going to keep the toes pointing to the ceiling. Really think about activating the tummy muscles and activating the inner thighs as you squeeze the legs together to cross over and actually just lift the tailbone slightly. Only a very tiny movement, take it back down, cross it over, lift the tailbone slightly. So we're really activating those lower belly muscles. So four of the toe taps, four of the crisscross. Are we ready? Of course you are, you're born ready you guys. Okay, so let's go with the toe taps. Bring in shins parallel to ceiling, tap one toe down, bring it back up, tap the other toe down, bring it back up. So we're doing this quite slowly. We really want to activate those lower tummy muscles, putting the inner thighs towards one another too. And the first round's done already. So another three of these. Feel free to do whatever you fancy in the rest. Let's go for the second round. And rest, good. Next round, let's go. Tapping those toes down, squeezing them back up, keeping those lower tummy muscles really pulled in, pressing the lower back into the ground if you're not using the block. If you're using the block, then really just feel that your tailbone is tilting upwards towards the ceiling. Good, and rest. One more of those, then we'll move to our crisscross legs. Let's go. Remembering to keep breathing through this exercise, even though it's not quite so difficult from a cardio perspective. Keeping those tummy muscles pulled in. Good. If you're using the block, just lift the hips, move the block out of the way. <clears throat> Cross, cross legs, take the toes up, point the toes, open the legs, cross them over, lift the tailbone. Open the legs, cross them the other way, lift the tailbone. Really pull the tummy muscles in here, really engage the inner thighs, so squeeze everything together as you lift that tailbone up. Again, we're not going too fast. Good, and rest. Three more rounds and then we're done. Let's go. Open it up, cross it over, lift the tailbone. It's only a tiny movement with that tailbone, but it really activates those tummy muscles. Moving as fast or as slow as suits you this morning. And rest. Two more rounds. Get ready. Crisscross cross legs. Good. 
Good. Keep breathing. Last 20 seconds. Let's go. Stretch it out. Squeeze it in and up. Lifting that tailbone. Really squeezing all the muscles around the legs. Excellent stuff. Bring the feet down to the floor. As you take a nice big inhale, peel the back up off the floor, lifting up into bridge. And as you exhale, roll the spine back down. So inhale as you peel the spine up, really squeezing everything at the top. And then exhale, roll it back down. Inhale, squeeze everything up, peeling the spine up off the mat. Exhale, roll it down. And take the feet as wide as your yoga mat and just windscreen wiper the knees from side to side. Brilliant. Maybe stretch the knee away from you as it gets towards the bottom of the movement. Just really stretching down the whole side body. And hug the knees into you. Right hand on right knee, left hand on left knee. Just take a couple of circles through the hips. Circling them one way. And then circling them the other way. And popping the feet back down, taking the arms out as wide as you can, straight out from the shoulders. Lift the hips up, scoop them over to the right and pop them back down. Hug the knees into the chest and then roll the knees over to the left really stretching out through the whole back, turning your head to look over your right shoulder if that feels good. And you can also use your left hand on your knees if you want to pull the knees further over, or if you just want to encourage the stretch along your spine a little more. Now each breath, see if you can relax your body even deeper onto the mat. Any way you might be gripping or holding tension, give it a little squeeze and then release it on your exhale. Then bring the head back to centre. Release the arm if you're using it. Pull the tummy muscles in and roll the hips back onto the mat with the feet coming down last. Straighten yourself up <laughs> and then lift up the hips, scoop them over to the left and pop them down. Hug the knees into the chest and then roll the knees over to the right. This time looking out over your left shoulder and using your right hand on your legs if you want to or along the spine to encourage the twist. And then get really, really comfy in your twist, letting everything sink down into the mat. If anywhere is gripping, give it a little squeeze and see if you can release it on your exhale. and then bring the head back to centre. Release the right arm if you were using it. Hug the knees into the chest, pulling the tummy muscles in and roll the hips back onto the mat. Take the hips down, the feet down last. 
straighten yourself up and then we'll come into final savasana so take the legs out long arms down by your sides we're going to do a moving savasana today so starting with the right leg lift it off the floor slightly point the toes flex the feet point the toes flex the feet point the toes flex the feet and then drop it down onto the mat and let it be really heavy lift the left leg point the toes flex the feet point the toes flex the feet point the toes flex the feet then drop the leg down onto the mat and let it be really heavy squeeze the muscles of both legs flexing the feet really squeeze the thighs lift the kneecaps up towards your hips squeeze 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 and then completely relax and release both legs. Let them be heavy on your mat. Squeeze all the muscles of the lower torso, pull the tummy muscles in, squeeze the glutes together, really squeeze, 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 and then completely relax and release, letting them be heavy on the mat. Moving to the upper torso, squeeze the chest muscles, squeeze the rib muscles, squeeze the shoulders down towards your lower back. Really squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. And then relax and release, letting your torso be really heavy on the mat. Lift the right arm, make a fist, stretch out the fingers, make a fist, stretch out the fingers, make a fist. Then drop the arm down and let it be really heavy. Lift the left arm, make a fist, stretch out the fingers, make a fist, stretch out the fingers, make a fist. Then drop that arm down, let it be really heavy on your mat. Squeeze both arms really, really tightly. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. And then completely relax and release them onto the mat letting them be heavy squeeze your shoulders up towards your ears squeeze all the muscles around the neck really squeeze 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 and then relax and release letting the shoulders be really heavy on your mat and then lastly your face squeeze all the muscles of the face really squeeze them together squeeze 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 and then completely relax and release, letting everything be heavy on your mat. And then when you're ready, start to think about moving. Maybe a single finger or toe, maybe wiggling all of your fingers and toes, maybe rolling the head from side to side or circling through the wrists and the ankles. Maybe making a bigger movement, maybe you feel like doing a great big stretch. Or maybe you feel like hugging your knees into your chest or doing a twist or stretching down the side body. Move your body wherever it's asking you to move. And if it's asking you to stay exactly where you are, then stay exactly where you are. <laughs> and then when you are ready, either roll up to seated or come over onto your side. And your practice for this morning is done. Thank you so much for joining me. <laughs>